Hey guys, JB here from Alpha Wolf Consulting. Welcome to another episode of Understanding Thyself. And this episode is all about understanding full brain activation and my processes and practices that I use with full brain activation. So to begin with, we have to understand, well, what is full brain activation? Well, full brain activation is when I simultaneously activate my left hemisphere and my right hemisphere to be able to, you know, um, activate or access my subconscious, you know, emotional states, my feelings, my subconscious narratives and language patterns, but to do it in a manner where I am able to consciously structure and organize and categorize everything in there. So it's very important for this practice that we understand like what is happening within our mind, how our mind is structured and created and sort of the different aspects of our mind in terms of if I want to release fears, I cannot release fears logically. I have to release fears emotionally to truly release them. If I only ever release a fear logically, I will still feel the fear and I will not understand why I'm feeling, feeling the fear. All right, so it's really important for this because this is the aspect of our personal development and our personal structuring that allows us to feel how we want to feel in life, to be able to become who we want to become in life. So it's very important to just understand, okay, full brain activation just means crossing of the hemispheres. When my brain is required to operate at its full potential, it will operate at its full potential. If my brain is not required to operate at its full potential, it won't operate at its full potential. So this is an important aspect of this process, okay, of full brain activation, is anyone can talk the shit they want, when your hemispheres are crossed, your full brain is activated. Do you sort of get it? You can try and do these practices without activating it properly. But right now, my full brain is activated. You will hear tonal shifts within my voice, okay? And you will hear, okay, within the structure of my language patterns, a much more fluent and accessible access to past and previous knowledge. Okay, so that's an important thing to understand that if we want to sound and perform at our highest level, we have to activate our brain at its highest level. Do you sort of understand? So just by me holding my arms like this, I am now in a heightened state, in a heightened mental state where I have access to my emotions, where if you ask me to explain love to you, I would explain love as being a feeling. Do you know what I mean? What kind of a feeling? A feeling of acceptance, a feeling of, you know, that warmth of connection with another. Do you sort of get it? I'm able to logically explain through emotion, my emotions and my feelings. Do you sort of understand? So if I'm thinking about structuring and creating, let's say a script, well, the language that I'm going to be able to utilize in this position is going to be far greater than any other language. Now, everyone will want to talk their shit and say what they want to say. They can, I don't really care. When you hold your arms like this, regardless of what you may think or believe, you have now activated your conscious hemisphere and your unconscious hemisphere. So the thing about this is now every word that I say is being ingrained into my subconscious hemisphere. Do you understand? This is the process in how we reprogram our narrative and how we reprogram our subconscious narratives and our subconscious beliefs and our subconscious thoughts. When I am in this activation, okay, I am now able to access my subconscious mind. I am now able to implant, okay, information, narratives, beliefs within my subconscious mind. So it's very important to understand this because 
this is the secret of the practice. Do you sort of get it? Without activating the full brain, the practice doesn't work. We are only ingraining in our sub in our conscious hemisphere. Do you sort of understand? So when I sit like this, okay, there are there are many different things that I can do. So for example, I can do deep analytics or deep analysis. So I can look on past experiences or current problems or challenges that I may be facing and I can assess them and look at them through my full state. You know what I mean? I can understand them better. I can see deeper. And you might argue that, you know, it's all bullshit, but that's great. Enjoy your life. I don't care. Do you sort of understand? I use this practice when analyzing because it allows me to see more, to see more data, to understand deeper meanings within data sets. Do you sort of understand? Our subconscious mind has such processing power that our conscious mind has, it pales in comparison. Do you sort of understand? So when I am active like this and I am doing analytics or analysis within my own life or problem solving, well now I have access to the processing power of my subconscious mind. Do you sort of understand? It's very important that you understand this because if you just do this, you will get the results. If you talk shit, you will only ever talk shit. Do you sort of get it? So like you don't have to believe me but it doesn't change the facts of the matter sort of a thing. Alrighty, so now another practice that we can do is we can do retrospection. So retrospection is different to analyzing. Retrospection is where we are looking back on past experiences or current experiences and trying to decipher and understand the emotional meanings that we have assigned to those aspects or to those areas or to those challenges, problems, events, situations, whatever it may be. So this is very important because in this practice, we are in the exact same position. We've got both our hemispheres activated. And now what we are doing is we are looking at our <clears throat> past experiences or challenges or situations or anything that we're facing, anything that we want to deal with or whatever it may be. Okay, and what we're really doing is we're trying to experience, re-experience that memory and decipher and understand how that memory made us feel. How did we feel in the moment? Understand, you know, what what is the narrative that I'm getting? So if I'm going through, let's say, for example, a breakup, okay, if I'm going through a breakup, like how is that breakup making me feel? What is the narrative that I'm creating around the breakup, around why the breakup's happening, around this, around that? Do you sort of understand? So this practice, what we're looking at is we're looking at understanding really deep into being able to see our emotions in the moment or in our past memories and how those emotions affected our narrative or the narrative that we created. So for example, someone could cheat on us and we could, you know, in the breakup say this person has cheated on us and, and it made us feel really terrible and low and worthless and all of this. And then it's like, what is the narrative being created? So the narrative being created might be that, you know, I wasn't good enough, I wasn't attractive enough, this, that, the other. Do you sort of see it? So through this practice, we're able to see that I felt low. I felt, you know, less than. I felt like nothing. And the narrative I created out of that was that I was nothing. I was less than and all of this. Do you sort of understand? So now I logically understand when that narrative comes in my mind or I start to feel less than or insecure. Well, I know that's because of what happened. So I'm able to go and rewrite or re, re-narrate the meaning of that, okay? And we're able to look at it and look at that experience and was it like, was it that how you acted and how you behaved pushed someone away or was it the weakness of their character that led them astray? Do you sort of get it? Like if you and your actions were toxic, negative, 
you know, and you were tearing someone down and being, you know, let's say the most narcissistic, egotistical person, and you push someone into someone else's arms, well, that's completely different than if someone cheats on you. Do you sort of get it? Like, so you just got to understand that, like, if we're the ones that are creating the environment for the cheating, we have to take responsibility for that so that we can progress forward. Do you know what I mean? But if it, it wasn't because of our actions, if we did everything right, if we, you know, showed up every day, if we were an honest, transparent, authentic person and version of ourselves and all of this, and they still chose to cheat, that's a completely different story. Do you sort of get it? So what we want to do with this practice is we want to be able to see ourselves, see how that situation affected us emotionally. Like what did it make us feel? You know, do we want to continue to feel that way in situations like that? You know, what was the narrative created? And sort of what, what like within the narrative, okay, we have to take responsibility, 100% responsibility. So we take responsibility if I was the one that caused the, the, the cheating or we take responsibility if they were the ones that caused the cheating. We chose the wrong person. We overlooked certain aspects of their personality that were negative. Do you sort of understand? So this practice is very, very good because this is the sort of practice that allows us to process and deal with emotions and past trauma and create new meaning and create new ways forward. Alrighty, so the next practice that we can do with full brain activation comes down to learning and memory storage. When I understand, okay, like when my logic and my unconscious are simultaneously activated, I can now organize and structure my subconscious mind. So in learning, okay, uh, an important thing to understand is memory retention is directly related to meaning and importance. If information is meaningful and important to me, I put focus and effort on memorizing it. The link and the association of meaning to information is the cause of memory retention. Okay, so the meaning we give to something. Okay, if someone tells me how to make a million dollars, okay, that, that's worth a million dollars, that has meaning. So then that information becomes very, very important to me. But just to the same, if someone tells me they're going to kill me, like that has meaning, that has meaning to my life, to my existence. That's very important to, to understand and to know. So I'm going to put a lot of focus on remembering this. So you got to understand these, like this memory retention, naturally we do this. So we do this naturally with our experiences, our memories and different things like that. Think back to when you were a kid to a fun experience that you had. Let's say when you were eight and you went to a water park. If you think back right now, you'll be able to think back to a time if you were there or whatever the situation may be, okay? Like if you, if you think back, you'll be able to find that memory because in, in your hierarchy of importance as a child, going to a water park was very important. Do you sort of understand? So as our conceptualization of meaning and our external environment evolves, adapts and changes, the meaning and the memory storage that we have also changes. So whatever we're focused on currently in life as being highly meaningful to us is where the predominant area of our memory storage is within our subconscious mind. So what that means is what's important to me in life my subconscious mind makes those synaptic pathways because I'm thinking about it repetitively, makes those synaptic pathways very, very strong. And then older, less relevant information or memory 
those synaptic pathways don't get used as much so they become weaker it becomes harder to remember that's why if you went to university 10 years ago you understand the con concepts of the learning in the course and how it applies to what you're currently doing now but there would be a lot of learning that is highly relevant but would fall between the wayside because it doesn't directly relate to what you're doing now. So you still have that memory but the memory is harder to access or attain. Okay so that's an important aspect of full brain activation is we're now able to understand through focus okay through what I'm focusing on I'm creating the strengths between the links in the meaning and the um, information or knowledge so for example if I love cooking okay and, and I spent 15 years cooking okay which I personally did but if I've spent 15 years cooking there is thousands upon thousands of recipes that I've cooked over that time but it's like the, the recipes that I remember and that I predominantly will use will be the ones that hold meaning to me do you know what I mean? So the meaning is, is based around taste, flavor, and the experience of the food. But it's sort of like there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I'm not going to utilize because to me it's irrelevant, you know, based on taste and things like that. Like I'm not going to make a pea and ham soup. Do you know what I mean? Like I can make a pea and ham soup, but the likelihood I'm ever going to make a pea and ham soup for myself is quite low because I like other kinds of food. Do you sort of understand? So naturally, that information isn't really important in my hierarchy of importance or meaning within my life. So to remember it, while I can force myself to remember it, to remember it doesn't really hold any meaning. If I know how to make a pea and ham soup, it doesn't really change my life. Do you know what I mean? But if I know how to cook my favorite meal, well then that's very important to me because that's a way I treat myself. That's a way I, you know, give back to myself. Do you sort of understand? So the memory that we have in terms of our memory storage is directly related to our focus and then the meaning of the information or knowledge. What does it mean to me in my day-to-day -day life? What does it mean to me, you know, in my life? You know, is it important for me to remember tax codes? Probably not if I'm not a tax accountant. Do you sort of understand if I'm not trying to finesse the tax system? It's irrelevant information for me to know tax codes because I can outsource that to someone who, who is actively remembering that. Do you sort of understand? So the goal with memory isn't to become this person who knows everything, okay, because everything you hear everything you experience throughout your life is recorded in your subconscious mind trust me if you do enough work into remembering and focused you know attention on memory so like you go last tuesday what was i doing and you sit there for three or four hours and you remember your whole day step by step if you force yourself to do that, your memory retention or your memory access will be at a much higher rate. Do you sort of understand? So it's sort of like <clears throat> whatever information you focus on or whatever you, know, you deem as being valuable or vital to your day-to-day -day life. So for example, if you like to eat fish, understanding how to fish is pretty important if you are out there fishing every day fishing is very important understanding information around fishing is very important <clears throat> if if you live in the middle of the country okay and there's no rivers around and not much fishing then understanding fishing isn't that important because the likelihood that you're going to use that information is very low do you sort of get it so like it's important for this to just understand the natural aspect of our memory. The natural aspect is directly related to utility. So if we're trying to remember specific information that isn't utilized, okay, in our day-to-day -day life, then we have to create extra focus and extra meaning and importance to that memory. 
Do you sort of understand? But we also have to actively focus on it every day to build it into that habit. Do you sort of get it? It's like doing bicep curls. So I'm, I'm doing it, the action, I'm building the muscle, but I'm also ingraining the muscle memory. Do you know what I mean? So we're trying to ingrain the muscle memory for the specific memory storage that we want, if that makes sense. Alrighty, so the next, the next process we can do um, with the full brain activation is a really fun one, but it's